nothing out of 402 and 470 or any other class I do. It's that if you're connecting two things together, you really need to see if they're going to fit. Okay. Just because the plug fits doesn't mean that they're going to actually play together <coughs> nicely. Okay. As in Vietnam, and a student took a charging unit as a two-prong plug, you know, just like we always had, stuck into the wall and it promptly blew up. Why? Because that one in one can, it was being fit to 20. Right. Now, your cell phone chargers, is that okay to plug them into two feet? Have you ever looked at what the requirement is on the, the charger that you need? Because it will tell you that it will take anything 50 hertz to 60 hertz, and that it will take anything from probably 100 volts up to about 240. <coughs> so it's okay to go to a, <coughs> to a foreign country, plug it in, and everything. But you know, more and more electronics are becoming idiot proof. <laughs> but you can certainly still get into a world of hurt. But as an engineer, when you are interfacing things together, you got to make sure that they're going to uh, actually do the interface. So for our electrical circuits, in terms of logic gates, um, <clears throat> we've talked about voltage and current, right, and power consumption. We need to talk about speed of operation. Remember, we start off with the uh, analogy of pressure being equivalent to voltage and trying to uh, have some type of a load on the system. So from a pressure analogy standpoint, um, so you have a, a pressure source here bottle that's got some, some 100 PSI, it's got a uh, reducer, so that maybe you get out 3 PSI, 0 to 3 PSI. Okay. So we're going to say that 0 PSI corresponds to logic level 0 and that 3 PSI corresponds to logic level uh, 1. Uh, if you now load this thing, if I put it through a small tube, maybe this is a big tube, and then we're going to put it through a small tube, what's the pressure right here? Assuming a logic level of 1. 3 PSI. 3 PSI. You've gone through the reducer, okay. What's the pressure here? Also Water runs uphill. Okay. Is it not? Okay. 
So what's the pressure inside the tank? The source tank oh, or the PSI? PSI. One PS, 100 PSI plus one atmosphere. When you pump up your car tire to 30 PSI, that's a gauge pressure, right? That's the pressure inside the tire with respect to what? To one atmosphere, right? Is pressure a through variable or an across variable? Through. Through. And a load on it. Across. Through. Why do we have to don't know? <laughs> Every, make up your mind. You have to guess. Across. Through. Is everybody voted? Those that said through are wrong. It's an across variable. <coughs> What's voltage? A through variable or an across variable? Across. Across. Thank you. So to measure voltage, you have to measure between two points. It's exactly the same with pressure. So when you're measuring here, you've got a gauge, but that gauge is reference to one atmosphere. Yes? Okay, so if it's 3 PSI up here, that really means what? 3 PSI plus what? One atmosphere. So what's the pressure at the end of the tube? One atmosphere. Is that all right? So now, this is a really, really good source, okay? So if I take and were to put a really huge um, pipe on it, you know, and then, I neck, or then it comes out to a really big straw, what's the PSI right there? Still three. PSI here, zero. <coughs> what about, so the pressure is the same, but what about the resistance? Well, on which one? On the larger two. On the larger two. So therefore, what's going to happen? More flow? Yes? Well, why exactly is the pressure related to the position? If it were a sealed tube, I would assume that the pressure would be the same throughout the tube, but not. The answer is no. Pressure drops at, as a function of okay. distance. All right. If you have a, do you remember in 402 lab you made a resistor? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you made this resistor a quarter inch long, or a quarter inch wide, three inches long and it had resistance. If you put five volts up here and zero volts here, what would be the voltage in the middle of the thing? Do you understand? It's exactly the same situation here. Right? Okay. So, what happens if I put a a balloon on this thing here. Now what's going to happen? How would you model it electrically? Okay. So I have a pressure source and we're going to do the analogy here now. So pressure corresponds to what? Okay, so I'm going to do a volt each source here. So here's a 3 PSI battery. Now what? And what is the potential here? One atmosphere in our case, yes? Correct. Okay. 
So what's the rest of the circuit now to model either one of these? A resistor in, in series with a capacitor. You want me to do that? Yeah. Where's, where's the capacitor going to go? I see. But are we modeling the bigger or the smaller one? I don't care. Uh, What's the difference? The resistance only is different. The value. A little resistor or a big resistor? <clears throat> right, just the resistance number will change. So what do I do with the other end of the capacitor? Ground in. What's on the other side of the balloon? Is one one atmosphere. atmosphere. Does he understand that I would take that? And this is really at one atmosphere down. You can call it ground if you want. Just like with any electrical system, you can call ground any place you want in the circuit, correct? Okay. All right, so with this system here, first order, second order system, or first, right? So we're really interested in the pressure of the voltage across the capacitor. What's that going to do as a function of time? Increase, how? exponentially. Okay. Time constant is given by what? Time is 60. It's 63% of the volume. Thank you. RC. So the bigger the resistor, what happens? Longer the time constant. Longer the time constant. Bigger the capacitor. Longer the time constant. Is that all right? So, you know, if I'm dealing with a balloon here and I got a small soda straw, how long is it going to take the balloon to blow up so that it stops moving, right? In other words, just like a capacitor, you're going to dump charge onto it until you get it charged up and then no more flow is going to happen and it will maintain the three PSI across it. Well, that's our balloon now, so give me an estimate here. I got this set up here, this big of a pipe, this big of a balloon, just a regular balloon, same thing here, so the straw balloon. How long do you think it will take for steady state to be made to happen? Longer for the smaller balloon? Or it's the same the size balloon. Straw. Smaller straw ought to take longer. longer. Give me an estimate. Somewhere between 15 picoseconds and a year. <laughs> Two minutes. I think I've encompassed everything. <laughs> Two minutes. For which? For this small straw. Two minutes? Pretty salt, small straw, but maybe. For the big one? Two seconds. Maybe. Okay, maybe. Is that you understand what's kind of going on? Okay. So if I were to uh, now say, okay, I'm now going to put zero PSI there, what's going to happen? You're swapping from having three PSI I'm, to zero. Yes, I'm now swapping from having three PSI to zero PSI. What's going to happen? Be an atmosphere all throughout. Say that again. Be one atmosphere all throughout. Yes. So what's going to so happen? The whole circuit's grounded, so nothing happens. It's an equilibrium. Pardon? The balloon. Thank you. The balloon will deflate. What happens? You know, you blow up a balloon, you pinch it, you know, and then you release your fingers off the the mouthpiece. It deflates, right? So. How long is that going to take? Much less. Time. Probably less. Why? Because there's maybe less resistance there. 
I mean, it may turn out that, you know, for a balloon, when you neck it down here, maybe that's where most of the resistance is actually concentrated. Okay, so if you're trying to blow this balloon up and down to indicate logic level zero or one, is this going to be a fast system? No. No, terribly slow. Okay, so we would certainly like to have switching systems that are much, much faster than that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so this was a kind of a physical look at a logic system, but we want to use electrical components. Okay. So there were fair, several logic families. There was R, TL, resistor transistor logic, then diode transistor logic, and then we went to the really first popular, this was some 40 years ago maybe, TTL, transistor transistor logic, and then went to MOS, metal oxide semiconductor type of logic, and typically they were called NMOS or PMOS. And then we went to CMOS. CMOS stands for complementary metal oxide semiconductor type of logic. Okay. So to show you how this works, let me put my own logic family in here. Switch resistor logic. So we're going to say that we're dealing with a voltage that's going to be 5 and 0, and you would ex this is volts, of course. And you would expect then for positive logic that what's going to happen is 5 volts would be 1 and 0 volts would be. <clears throat> okay, and uh, current. Whatever is needed so let's make a, a circuit like this I'm going to have VCC and that's going to be 5 volts I've got a resistor maybe this is 1k ohm well let's yeah we'll, we'll, we'll try 1k ohm and now I have a switch And there's V out. Okay. So a logic level zero opens the switch, a logic level one closes the switch. In the current position that I have it, what is V out? What's, well, first of all, in the, in the position I have it, what's the input? Zero or one? Two choices. What's the input to the switch? Everybody okay? The switch is what? Open. Therefore, what am I putting in? Putting in a logic level zero. Yes? <laughs> Nothing. Remember, zero is an input. Right. What is coming out? Yes. 